And that's exactly what we're sinking our teeth into this morning. Mr. Alwar Rafsajani, who is the Executive Director of Sislak, uh, joins us here in our Abuja studios. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. A pretty staunch defense put up by Mrs. Onochia, you must admit. Well, it's, um, it's very sad. And uh, actually, many Nigerians are wondering, what is this desperation that you just want to be there? Uh, public service is meant really to serve the people. And uh, if Nigerians are saying that there is an integrity deficit in the process or in the person uh, that is being put forward, I don't understand a government that is also talking about transparency uh, that will bring in someone uh, who already Nigerians um, believed will undermine electoral integrity if that person is there. I think the inability for the government official to appreciate the sensitivity of Nigerians is one thing that uh, really is um, of a great concern. Mm -hmm. If you want to appoint this woman, why can't you give her another appointment? But this one that is supposed to be seen to be independent, that is supposed to have people of impeccable character, that is supposed to have people that will not, you know, nobody will, uh, you know, will doubt their, uh, you know, bias. You still want to enforce that kind of person. This action in itself tantamount to undermining the independence of INIC. Because if you eventually impose, you know, if you impose this woman, many Nigerians will not believe that that commission is independent. And going by her antecedents, who is totally intolerant of views by other Nigerians concerning this government, it's very clear that many Nigerians will not believe she will not go and do the bidding of the government. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, right from the beginning, the insistence, and if you look at the delay even the Senate has, you know, taken you know, in order to bring back this issue mm -hmm. so that the public will, you know, uh, maybe forget about this. It all shows that we are not doing things in the best interest of Nigerians and democracy itself. So I don't know why the people who are actually benefiting the bureaucracy are the very one that are even, you know, creating doubts about the very importance of democracy that you are practicing. And they are the beneficiary of the democracy because ordinary person voted for democracy and what Nigerians are seeing, insecurity, corruption, impunity, complete you know, hopelessness in the system. Whereas those drivers who are benefiting, you can see them, just elect them, give them three months, you will see the drastic change in the pattern of their lives. They may not have houses in Abuja, but give them some payment when they're there. You see houses that, you know, even rich people who are actually businessmen and women may not have. So I think it is important. And this very action that the government is doing with even the National Assembly entertaining this, honestly speaking, is not giving hope and confidence that we will have a sound, you know, um, electoral system or electoral body that will be manned by people of integrity, people that Nigerians will sleep and say, look, they are actually doing their work because they are not known to be involved in any political um, activism. And in particular, why this woman matter, matters more is because of the role she has been playing. Uh, like I said, you know, go to Twitter, go to Facebook, go everywhere. Once you express contrary view, to what this government, you know, is doing. You will be abused, you know, uh, dismissed, mm. blackmail, all sorts of things. There are so two, two, two arguments, though. Um, and there are those who say, and, and she did say first, in her own defense, that immediately after the president was sworn into, I mean, won the 2019 elections, she, um, she, she, she 
she did not have any affiliations with the Buhari Support Organization and a number of other organizations which were machineries built to support the president into power, that she, she, she stopped that. She stopped her association with them. And that when the APC did a revalidation of members, uh, she did not take part in the process, perhaps because she, she did not want to be a part of the party anymore. Um, so that is, is, is there in our defense. But there are other people who also claim that, you know, we are all human beings. We all have our biases. So perhaps her own bias was out in the open and she openly expressed her bias. Uh, but that the people who we put in agencies or in any place where we think that, you know, people should be neutral, are we truly saying that they don't have biases and because of their bias they might not be able to tell right from wrong? You know, what are your take on those kinds of questions? No, listen, let us not um, uh, play with Nigerians' intelligence and let us also be honest. And particularly, I am saying that with regard to this government that talks about, you know, uh, transparency, integrity, you know, and morality. You know this particular person, this nominee. You know the antecedent, you know her antecedent. For the fact that even before the 2019 election, if she claimed that after the 2019, the president won, she stopped, you know, uh, formally being involved. Informally, she is, and she still. So, even from the moral superiority, if you want to come this thing, you should actually come with clean hands. Like I said, if you want to appoint her, nobody, no, nobody, we are not saying that then appoint her to other, you know, um, government uh, appointment. But this particular one that all of us as Nigerians have stake, because once you undermine the electoral integrity, once you have people who, you know, are obviously biased, once you have people who openly will create uncertainty, and, you know, with her background and the activism in terms of uh, attack to Nigerians, give her that place, give her that opportunity there. Nothing is going to change. So I'm appealing to government. Let her give her another appointment. Mm. But this one, that every other parties, that every other stakeholders really, really want to see a very, um, if you like, you know, uh, decent, you know, uh, configuration of men and women mm -hmm. that can actually give hope and confidence that are not being associated with even the past in terms of, you know, uh, their disposition about, you know, uh, 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 policies and uh, promoting even the government. You need to ensure that the political parties themselves, they are not having an issue with such kind of person. Mr. Rush, you're but you haven't quite answered the question about the natural biases that people the, could have. Listen, every, look, every, okay, you as a journalist, will you just come to the station and start promoting your own biases? Because you want to be fair. You want the Nigerians to continue to listen to you. People respect you because of your ability to balance things. People respect you because of your you know, ability to give chance and opportunity and views. To others, and you're able to accommodate and tolerate descending views. So I, I do but, not want to make this personal, but you know, assuming we were to no, no, no not personal I, to you. I'm I just know, making you assuming know, we're, um, assuming, example. We're, assuming we were to go down that route, uh, just just for instance, I mean, on television, of course, it would be expected that you will give uh, a fair analysis, so to speak. It, it, that's correct. Yes. This is without prejudice to the biases or your personal beliefs. Exactly. Is, isn't that correct? Exactly. So as much as possible, I mean, some people have said that what, has, what she has expressed is her personal view, which is out there in the open. People already know where she stands. Some people will say perhaps it's even safer to have somebody who they know where they stand rather than having somebody who, you know, they might be doing things in the secret and then in, out in the open they claim to be doing other things. What are your thoughts on that? At least they didn't come out to say that <laughs> they are doing this and they are not being visible. Look, the person we are talking about yes. is as good as Garbashow, is as good as Adeshina. It's as good as Lama Ahmed. So there's no difference between these people that I have mentioned now. 
in terms of their position about government, in terms of their defense, rightly or wrongly, in terms of association with the government, you know, and even the, uh, the ruling party. There's no difference between her and them. In fact, they work together. They work together. Look, why can't the government, you know, bring more confidence to Nigerians that they are serious about 2023 by having people that they do not, Nigerians will not have issue with them. Must she be there? If you insist she must be there, then remove everybody in Anik and bring in, you know, um, the Bari Media Organization. Then we know that we are heading to, you know, uh, another thing. But you cannot come and even create problem for the other people who are not politicians within the INEC commission, as the commissioners. Look, we are talking about independence of this body. And we are talking about, you know, restoring confidence for Nigerians to believe in the electoral system, which is marred by electoral malpractice, electoral manipulation, electoral violence, and totally making Nigerians to distance themselves because of the character they've seen in the, you know, um, in, in, within the electoral system which did not give them confidence that if they vote X, Y, Z and that X, Y, Z won, will be declared. And that is why all the effort that civil society, you know, and in fact, big polities that has emerged, you know, with a lot of credible Nigerians talking about electoral reform that can actually usher us and restore confidence and believe on Nigerians. As it is now, if you go and put that woman, I am telling you, you have already succeeded in making Nigerians not to believe that 2023 is going to be free, fair, credible. So I am appealing to the government, give her another appointment where it does not concern public worries, public concern about the integrity of the electoral system that will happen. I think even as if, mm -hmm. I don't think she's happy that Nigerians are rejecting her. In fact, if I were her, I will honorably say that, Mr. President, thank you for this nomination because it's causing me more sleepless night. I can tell you that... What if she's not having sleepless nights? What yeah, if she's because, sleeping Because if, well? Niger, if you are nominated to do something for the nation and you are rejected overwhelmingly by Nigerian people because of the role that you, they believe you are going to play, it's not going to be a positive role. If you know her very well, she doesn't waste time in fact, I don't know why Bahari has not given her minister. Because, honestly speaking, what she is doing, some of the ministers are not even doing to promote even the government, to promote the president. But, you know, she accepted she's a victim of the system there. So, I would rather even appeal to her to even apply, to go and tell the president that, sorry, president, Nigerians, they don't like me there because they believe if I go there, I will do a bad job. Mm -hmm. So, w what if... if and this is just a what if, really. I mean, <laughs> I'm wondering. Some people might argue because she said that after it was after she, the president was returned in 2019, and that she ceased to be a member of the APC and did not bother to revalidate her membership. Now, some people will say that there are people who are in political parties because of a candidate. They only support one candidate. The moment that candidate's term is done they don't have anything to do with a political party. So some people might argue that she has spoken in vehement support of the president. The president is not going to be on the ballot in 2023, even if he wanted to be. <laughs> That's, he's being constitutionally barred. You don't think that perhaps as a result of the, the president not being there, that perhaps she might be able to wear some neutrality I, I don't in, think in, in looking at the you know electoral process. I don't think um, you know um, that will uh, apply because see what she is doing is not just about Mahmoud Bari as a person. It's a you know collective you know team that she is part of. What is to continue to push for the ruling party, not just President Bari. President Bari, when did Bari know her? This woman is not even based in Nigeria. She came, you know, and, um, you know, uh, because they didn't even know her. They refused to give her any serious appointment. But, but, they but, just kept her where she is just making noise. But she, but in, in fairness to her, she, the one person that she's consistently supported. That's why I say they have cheated her because she has, she has got bad names. She had, you know, fight with so many people, but they did not reward her with anything. 
Oh, she was made special assistant. So the person no, who's social media. Also. When some people who have not done anything, like a probably, you know, a probably just came in, they gave you a minister. How many, how many months, you know, did I probably cross over and he become a minister? And this woman has been talking in favor of the President Bahari. She has been talking in favor of the ruling party. They neglected her. She has been prostrated, if you don't know. So that is why I said the government themselves, they did not do well to her. And that's why I say if I were her, because it's about integrity. Since Nigerians say, look, if I go there, I will be seen to be doing biasing. President, thank you. If you wish, give me another thing that I can go and perform to the best of my ability where Nigerians can see my potentials. But not where Nigerians will continue to castigate me and abuse me. Let me tell you, once that woman is there, whether she has been allowed to perform her things in that anic or not, in terms of her political activism, Nigerians will not believe in anything fairness that will come from ANIC. So what the government is doing is actually to undermine the independence of that commission. Because if you bring in people who have, who Nigerians have doubt on them, that ANIC will be seen as completely not for Nigerians, but for some people who want to impose themselves. So that is why the government should save the integrity of that institution, you know, institution by making sure that they do not bring controversial people like I said, if you want, you know, uh, Awada, please give her something, let her do. She's very active in defending the government. Why can't you find something to give her so that she can continue to promote that? But why do you want to bring her to ridicule her? Because now you made Nigerians and those who don't even know her to know her as someone who will go and do bad things. It is not good for her. That is why I say if I were her, I would tell the president, thank you. Because your father damaging me. Because people, people are enjoying, you appointed people, they are enjoying there, and then me, you kept me, giving me, giving me a, a job that is bringing more insults every day. So I think I want to appeal to her herself to let her tell them that, thank you. If she cares about her own personal integrity, if she cares that Nigerians are not going to see her as somebody who is going to be, you know, um, pre-biased, as somebody who is going to add value to the electoral integrity, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, of, our, of our democracy. You know, largely, most of the arguments that you have made have been largely based on the perception and how this is going to affect even the perception of INEC. Uh, that it, she doesn't even have to do anything. The very fact that she's there exactly. already affects how Nigerians will perceive the institution. Absolutely. Uh, I'm wondering... In, in, in your thinking, what do you think could have informed? Because I, I really don't know how the selection process is for ministers or for even anyone going to INEC is, is done. But I want to imagine that there, there would have been a thought process uh, that would have thrown up her, you know, her nomination for the, such a position. Do you think that the people who nominated her saw something that we didn't see, um, you know, they, 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 I want to believe they must have nominated her yeah. because they believe that she's strong in the defense of government. And therefore... But, but they know what is required in INEC. No, 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 no. They don't care. Look, you see, you are dealing with people who are not respecting the sensitivity of Nigerians and who don't care about the integrity of even the government itself. Look, this government is supposed to be fighting corruption. Therefore, things like this should not be allowed because once the perception is thrown, Nigerians will believe that, okay, you're out there to read. You're out there to do X, Y, Z. That alone has diminished and destroyed what you are preaching to do. And that is why I say there's need to save this institution itself and to even save the government itself and create more confidence on Nigerians that, look, we are going to have, okay, you know, Jega was not a politician. When he came, there was no contention. Ibn Mahmoud was not known to be, you know, um, playing like politics, electoral politics. No contention. The court number, Percy Zokoye, he's no politician. He, nobody contested, you know, his nomination. So why this one? Which means that if people are saying this, then they have a valid, obvious, visible, tangible reasons to argue that this woman is not going to add value to this system there. 
because of her antecedent. So it doesn't matter whether she did not rebadulate her um, party membership. That one is just, is just by the way. But people know you, and you have been very active, very vicious in, in terms of attacking, you know, condemning, blackmailing, all sorts of things. Once you disagree with, that's why I say it's pity that those who have even suffered for the government themselves, they have not been rewarded. And those who just, in part, if you look at some of the people, they have been attacking the government, have been attacking the President Bari, but simply because they moved to the, another party, they were given those juicy appointments. She, like her, you know, who has been from the one, you know, involved in supporting the president and the ruling party, she was regulated. She has nothing. She, they used to move with the Abike, you know, Sadia, the minister of, uh, all of them, you know, we see them everywhere, you know. But you see, they are all, you know, considered for something more tangible that they can do. Which Nigerians are not even contesting whether they are APC or they are not APC. Why can't you do that to this woman? And if they did not do that to you, why can't you just leave them, go back to your London and have your peace? Now, everybody now is seeing her as a bad person. Why? Mm. It's not good. Let's take a break now. We'll come back and we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Sunrise Daily coming to you from our studios in both Lagos and Abuja. Yes, I'm in Abuja. We're not throwing it now to Lagos. Uh, they have questions for another for another guest right there in Lagos. Gentlemen. Well, yeah, we do have uh, Emmanuel Odafe Igbini, who is the national president, vanguard for leadership and democracy. He joins us via Zoom this morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Well, you heard the previous comments, and uh, even that of today from uh, Mr. Rafsanjani about the screening for that uh, vacant, or would-be vacant position in INEC and involving... Uh, uh, Slaughter or not Onoche. What do you think of all of these arguments making the rounds? Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me restate again, as I've always done, that I have never met her in person. I don't know her. She does not know me. But I'm speaking simply for the interests of this country, uh, Nigeria. I'm happy my brother talked about uh, public perception. My sister, too, she raised very vital uh, uh, points uh, for us to ponder over so that we we'll get the right decision we are making. Because there have been a lot of emotion, sentiment, even up to yesterday evening, uh, a respected member of the House of Assembly of my state, uh, who is vehemently opposed to her, was uh, arguing with me. And my position is clear and is consistent. The issue is public perception against her. By who? Yes. We have been told that she's a card carry member of APC, which she has now denied. I'm not going to you know, join in that issue. But what was even going to influence my you know, change of mind towards her was the issue raised, allegedly, that she's also from Delta State and that Delta State has two slots. And I told my brother, the rebel member yesterday, I said, well, if it is true that Onoche we have another person from Delta State who is also a national uh, commissioner of INEC. It will be fair for Delta State to have uh, two national commissioners while we have uh, six states in the South South. But I've heard that now clearly to say that the other uh, INEC commissioner was not appointed from the slot of Delta State that she's actually there on behalf of uh, Cross River State. If that is true, then that clears everything. Then when you're talking about biases of uh, appointees into INEC, let me repeat and repeat again. I have been a governorship candidate three times, three times up to the end. And I've interacted, of course, when you are a governorship candidate, you have to appear before INEC. There was a particular incident where I had a disagreement with an INEC commissioner who happened to be related, deadly related, to one of the, polit the politicians in that race. And I challenge Nigerians to be fair 
to show me one person in INEC before or now who has no bias for any politician in Nigeria. Show me one person, just one person. Mr. You see the point here? Um, yes, the point you, here is that. Are you suggesting uh, that even the national chairman of INEC has a bias for a certain political party? Let him deny that he does not have. I heard my Zira Sonjani or my sister mention some names versus Okoye and all that stuff. You see, when you say bias, a lot of us became INEC uh, national uh, chairman because of our bias for against June 12th. You all know this. Is that not a bias? Is that not a bias? Because if you supported, if you are in support of uh, SDP or June 12, it means you are also against some other persons who were not in support of June 12. And you are in INEC. Okay? What I'm trying to say here is that, look, for me, for my experience, as one who has participated in this thing you could call election, because as far as I'm concerned, I've never seen an election in my life. In Nigeria, even as a governorship candidate, the state chairman of my party for 10 years and chairman of CNPP. Why, why, no why did you say so? Be that you is that, is that because you didn't win? No, Chamberlain, you know that for me, I've, been, I've always maintained that in election, it is wrong with due respect to use the word win and lose. You don't win an election or lose an election. You only present yourself and it is left for the people to decide. We have seen even in other societies, where good people with credible integrity, record of integrity, you know, present themselves for election, and the majority just say, look, we just want somebody who will do the normal business for us, and they go and vote for whoever they choose, they decide to choose. So it's not a case of this use of the word win and lose. I've always said that it is creating problem for us. We don't win or lose election. It is left for the people. If you're in a community where people are criminals and you're a good person, and they go to the ballot box and decide to choose one of them, doesn't mean you have lost. You didn't lose. That so, is the other side of democracy. So right now, um, I, I'm curious this if it's wrong. Are you you're equating uh, one either being a card carry member of a political party, or as Mr. Rafsanjani alluded to, when people know you for belonging to a political party, is that the same thing as as you suggested having biases? and coming into INEC office, I'm trying to understand properly what you think uh, that there isn't any difference whatsoever. There's no difference. I am also a civil society person. I have been a labor leader with a multinational company. I have been very committed to you know, civil society operations. Our organization is not registered because we don't collect money from anybody. I was also a top official of NDI, National Democratic Institute of uh, America, that is interested in uh, election money all over the world. Okay, so I know what I'm talking about. Most of us who are civil society organization uh, people, we know what we are doing. We are buyers. Some of us work for partisan politicians. Never mind what you see on TV or whatever. I'm not saying that it's not good. You hold your side, I hold my side. No, for me, my suggestion is that instead of saying we are looking for independent or uh, people who are not politicians, have not no link to politicians, look, let me ask you one question, uh, my brother Chamberlain. If by Section 24 of the Nigerian Constitution, which says that the duty of every adult Nigerian from the age of 18 is to participate actively in the governance process of Nigeria, and then you wake up now, you are now saying, ah, for you to be an appointed into INEA, we are looking for somebody who has never been involved in anything governance or politics. That means we are we are making mockery of that section 24 because it's expected that everyone at the age of 18 ought to have participated and be partisan in support of somebody. Now back to even the INEC, I still ask the question: who is that person? Who is that person? Some have been active, it's just like okay, you, you mentioned uh, Jega. Jega for what we are told, was very active in the struggle for June 12. And of course, June 12, you know it, is, it was the so-called election between SDP and the uh, NRC. And so you have members of NRC who are still alive and still actively involved in the politics of today. So such person can also see Jagad then as somebody who is coming to do the bleeding of SDP against them. Well, so for um, me, if Mr. you Duffin. ask me, the way forward is that 
sorry, let me make this point. The way forward for me will be that let us have a system where the political parties involved in an election should be given opportunity to nominate one, at least one person from among them to be part of the electoral process, the management and supervision. So it will be difficult for me to sit down as a member of my party and then a, a, a member of another party trying to rig. It's not possible. Well, in any um, case. Interestingly, we have yes. agents already uh, that represent political parties during elections. At least they have... Uh, an insight and they know the process and of course ensure that things uh, go well whether this happens in reality as you have mentioned of course it's another thing entirely but you know there are different ways to look at this conversation uh, there's a moral angle there's a there's what the law says the constitutional angle and I, I know you've referenced sections of the constitution and let me just refer you to paragraph 14 part one of the third yes. schedule of the constitution as amended and it specifically says that a member of the commission shall be non-partisan and a person of unquestionable integrity. So uh, maybe the word bias is not, it's not the term that the Constitution uses. It uses non-partisan. And, you know, it, I had to go back to the dictionary to check the meaning of partisan because mm -hmm. clearly it appears as though the meaning has changed. And clearly the dictionary says a partisan person is a strong supporter of a party, a cause, or a person. In this case, a party. So, um... With this definition, would you say that she is partisan, a strong supporter of the APC? Of course, she's a strong supporter, an unrepentant one for that matter, for President Mohammed. I've been reading some of her, since this whole matter, I've been reading some of her posts on Facebook, I'm not on Twitter. So what is wrong with that? So now, in, in the eye of the something. Constitution, me, if you me, agree that she's something. partisan, no, 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 in the no, eye no, of the Constitution, that the point doesn't that disqualify her? No, 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 no. You can, if you read that paragraph 14, along with section 24 of the Nigerian Constitution that I have just mentioned, which imposes duty on you and I and every adult in Nigeria of, age of uh, age of 18 and above. Don't forget that for you to qualify to be an INEC uh, commissioner, you had to be, I think, 35 and above. Which means you would have been an adult at the age of 18 and then 17 years. And then the question will now be asked, if you say you have never participated, you know, in active governance of Nigeria, for the 17 years that you became mature as an adult, it means you have no business having this country. You just sit down and you wait for others to struggle and for you to enjoy. That is unacceptable. So you can see the contradiction. I mean, you, you, know, uh, Dafin, and, uh, you know, Mr. Daphne, you know how the Constitution uh, works. I mean, this part is meant to give, shed some more light, at least make things clear, because issues like this will arise. So, I mean, this has been more specific. It says that a member of the Commission shall be non-partisan. You have agreed uh, to the definition of partisan, which is a strong supporter of a party. You've agreed that she's a strong supporter of the APC, That's right, the president by extension, the APC. So the constitution yes. is clear. And let me even take you to no, the other no, no, part. No, no. If, if, if you don't <laughs> want to agree with this one, let me take you to the other part that says of unquestionable integrity. If there's anything Beautiful. that has been raised so far, mm -hmm. there are questions. So that's an, also mm -hmm. another side of the constitution. That is even the main one. If we are focusing on her integrity, I am more and more interested in that. Unquestionable integrity. I said my brother has evidence to present to Nigerians and to me now that Mrs. Loretta Onoche is a Nigeria of questionable integrity. Failure to do that, then they have no argument anymore. I have told you, just 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 by the uh, just suppose the section twenty four and paragraph fourteen. See, because many part of our constitution appear to be contradicting and creating more problems. How can you expect an adult? Okay, the INEC now is going around to say, look, we have spent some billions of naira to come up with an I mean, an online registration for Nigerians who have now attained the age of 18. So every day, so why are you not interested in convincing Nigerians to come and carry out their civil responsibility and their constitutional duty to register with INEC and encourage them to do so so as to have their participation in whoever emerges as the governor or president or senator or whatever to represent and take our country out of the mess that we find ourselves. Sorry to use that word. Why? Well, I mean, Why the provisions of, of the law, 
uh, pardon me, the provisions are quite clear. But since you raised that issue, let's, uh, you know, take this back to Mr. Rafsanjani to get his response to uh, that question you raised about her partisanship uh, or partisan affiliations and the unquestionable integrity angle. Uh, Mr. Rafsanjani, please go ahead. Yes, I want to let my brother know that um, when we are talking about uh, uh, partisanship, it's very, very clear, like you rightly, in fact, refer him to even the dictionary to interpret what partisanship is, which he, you know, gladly agreed that uh, she is actually an uh, unrepentant one. That, for me, has already knocked and, you know, finished the whole matter. That's number one. Number two. Uh, we need to understand there's a difference between electoral politics and Nigerians being concerned about governance. For example, I am not involved in electoral politics. I'm not a member of any political parties, but I'm a concerned Nigerian that I'm tired of looters. I'm tired of the fact that you know the system is producing crooks and criminals who are coming to create you know um, favorable laws for themselves, not for the people. I am tired to see that the country is, so many things are just not working. The civil service has collapsed. No, no hope, no confidence. Hospitals are not working. Education has collapsed. Our own value system have gone. I am tired as a Nigerian to see that. And I will be happy if, based on the advocacy we are doing, to see improvement on that, irrespective of which party or which president is doing that. So the work that you know you refer us doing is a work that is that has nothing to do with involving in politics or involving in supporting anybody. But whoever comes, whether it is PDP, APC, a, a, any other party, that Nigerians say, look, this is what we want. We won't see that happen. So I think it is important that we differentiate. Yes, of course, you know, um, you made reference to the fact that uh, some people supported, you know, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the June 12 thing. They, some people, they do that just because of the, their desire to ensure that the military, you know, is out. Not that they believe in the, you know, um, the, those parties at that time, but it was an opportunity for them to say, look, since there was an election, somebody won the election, why can't you give him so that, you know, we can avoid the kind of, you know, consequences we are experiencing, which till today, we are still, you know, facing that. That's number one. Number two, regarding the, um, the issue of the integrity, you see, you cannot also take one and leave one. The constitution is very clear. I mean, the provision is very, very clear. And I am telling you that even herself, she will not be happy that her integrity is being put to caution and tested. When people rejected you, then there's a problem with the integrity issue then. So to avoid that, just quietly leave them. Because even if you go there, the eye will be more on you. What they plan to do with you, you might not even be able to execute it. So really, seriously, uh, we need to you know, stop this thing in this country if we want to move forward. If the commission is supposed to be independent and supposed to have the qualification of the person as, you know, mentioned in the constitution, why do we want to tinker with it? Why do we want to take Nigerians for granted? INEC is not an appendage or is not supposed to be an appendage of the ruling party. It's supposed to be for all the political parties. So all the political parties, they want to be assured and they want to ensure that, you know, uh, the INEC that is supposed to conduct free, fair, credible election is not, you know, managed by people who they already have lost confidence in them. Likewise to Nigerians who want to really have change. Just a moment, uh, Mr. Afsanjani. desire Sanjani. to have change, to yes. get out, to, to read out people who okay. they think have no value. Okay, well, Mr. Afsanjani, let me, let me ask uh, a question. Just, just one moment. Let me ask uh, Mr. Dafe of... Uh, let me just ask him one question um, around the same issue that we have been talking about. Mr. Dafe, 
um, given all of this that's going on, all of the questions and all of the um, uh, hoopla, to use Chamberlain's word here this morning, do you think, and also to draw from some of the things that Mr. Sanjani have said, do you think that the appointment of a clearly, unrepentantly partisan person, just as you have described uh, Mr. Uh, you described Mr. Noche the other time. You see that kind of appointment helping the independence of INEC. The question first we should ask is NEC independent? You know, the name wasn't INEC initially. We came from Fedeco, NEC, and people said, oh, let us have uh, an independent. Uh, uh, electoral commission and they now added I independent. I am telling you that me, I have participated. I'm an insider. There's nothing like independent national electoral commission. Do you For think we should of, have an Nigeria? independent national electoral commission? Of course, of Good. course. Now, it, and it, that it, means that uh, the process, wait, hold on first, please. Okay. And the process to achieving that is taking the power of appointing or nominating a uh, national uh, chairman of INEC and members of uh, INEC from the president. You take it back and give it back to the political parties and then very credible civil society organizations. The mo but so long as the president, who is a partisan politician and interested party, is still given the power by the constitution to so nominate to so nominate persons to be okay. INEC chairman and the rest of the look at Vedoga. You know this talk, I don't like talking about people, but the last time I mentioned somebody's name, oh he got angry and blah blah blah. I said, ha, but you're in the public office and you want you don't want me to mention your name. But I'm in Azakaria, what's her name again? We all were told that she is a cousin of President Muhammad Bari and she was an INEC commissioner, in fact the most powerful before uh, uh, Mahmoud was appointed. And during her time in INEC, the same Nigerians celebrated INEC for conducting what they call free fair election uh, in Edo, Ondo, and other places. And I said, wait a minute. Oh, so Mrs. Amina Zakare is still there. So, and then uh, the same INEC conducted free and fair election. Well, I don't so to be it. fair, really, no, to be fair. I said the whole truth. I don't play politics. So if, if you say that, that uh, if you say that this right might even that. better the image of INEC or the independence of INEC. So to be fair, don't you think that we should have nomination from the PDP or at least an ex-member of the PDP, an ex-member of that the is AAC, the say, the AAP? Even an ex -member. So it's even so, make, uh, national so you're agreeing that PDP if that is not done now, INEC. so having just one of the APC isn't fair then we should have others from other party so maybe even at that let judging me tell you, or going by your argument this is still unfair no let did me you get what i'm blank. saying going by your argument that would mean that I this am is still telling unfair you that, no 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 i'm telling you that what you are trying to say is not true for you to say that mrs onoche if she is now confirmed will be the only partisan person in that INEC is not true they know themselves they know themselves. Uh, okay, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Daffy, help us understand then as, as who else is the an unrepentant. Pardon me, who else is an unrepentant supporter of a party in the INEC, as you have said? <laughs> Please, I don't want to mention this, so don't get angry again, but they know. Show me one who is not. I just, I just asked you to show me one that, who that is. Somebody like, uh, no, no, wait first. You know, there was this, oh, uh, Gulo Jonathan does not even know, uh, he didn't even know Professor Atari Ujega before he even uh, nominated him, blah, blah, blah. I was just laughing. If he didn't know, it's unfortunate because uh, Atari Ujega was very, very active for what we had in the struggle for June 12. My brother, with due respect to him, he's just trying to explain a way well, uh, where people just decided okay, to, so, to protest for revitation mm, of the June but, but Mr. Mr. Daffy, not true. In other words, yes. what you're saying is that the same uh, political parties that are contesting elections should have their members conducting and supervising the election. If that be the best and beginning of true democracy in Nigeria, otherwise all those things we celebrate, including Jude, with due respect, I was so, so much involved. 
So why do we then need to go ahead and vote election, if they can just go there? All the same thing. So wh why should we then bother ourselves going to vote when they can go there and agree amongst themselves? Okay, you take this, you take that, and then let's go. Settle the, the whole thing. No, no, no. I'm not talking about just go and share. I'm saying that for a body that will organize an election, Chamberlain, if you are an interested party in the, in, in the process, and I'm an interested person, and conflicting, opposing, interested but it will be difficult for you to read process, or it will be difficult for me to read process. It how long you, does it take to become no, we talk members about of... Uh, how long, just, Mr. just one you second, Mr. Mr. Uh, how long does it take to cross carpet? Yes. How long does it take? Even when they are making these decisions, <laughs> just that they, So, you know these things. That, that's the point Chamberlain is making here. So, the point again wait, is, wait, look, when you, you have already made it cross clear. Carpet, you want to bring another issue? <laughs> No, you have made it. You, what you are suggesting is that we should have all members of every political party in Nigeria in INEC. That's about 74 or less now of them in INEC as commissioners. That's exactly what you're suggesting right now. So if that is the case, and you no, know you see, how easy, yeah. just a second, you know how easy it is for like 60 or 70 political parties to align with just one close to an election. So how long does it take? How easy would that be? Do you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm a member of the People's Redemption Party. Okay? These things we call 100 political parties. I hope you know what is going on. There are even members of NEC, INEC, what you call INEC, who actually sponsor or arrange those political parties. And why did they do that? They use that to negotiate with uh, the so-called big parties. Did your party, did the, PRP uh, do that? The teacher say, uh, we will be excluded. PRP, you know our record. Jambali, you know our record. I'm proud to say, you can go and confirm who Comrade Ibini or Dafimane is, as the PDP governors in my state or anywhere. I mean, at the national okay. level. PRP is, is at the, of course, you know, at the national level, the reason the then PDP did everything possible to keep PRP out of a uh, uh, the rest of political party was because of our compromising stand on issues. They okay. still feared us that he used the same Professor Jega to direct us, and the same Professor Jega has now secretly gone behind the, the All right, Mr. Daffy, the just hang on a minute. We, 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 we need to uh, take in as, uh, maybe a couple of more questions because we need to wind down anytime soon. Mark, go ahead, please. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. I'm just wondering, I mean, sadly, I do not know if there are some misunderstandings here um, about June 12. I do not know if you would like to... You yeah. Know. Okay, let me clarify. Um, pro many mass democratic organizations at that time, including National Association of Nigerian Students, which, you know, I was also one of the leaders at that time, you know, um, who are, that was our final year in 1993, right? We, you know, we finished school actually at that time, but... Nance, we met, we took decisive decision about the June 12. In fact, we actually directed that in all the campuses, the students should not actually participate in that you know, um, election. But we have also been fighting the military at that time. We are calling for the militarization of Nigerian politics and governance. And when June 12 came, we thought it would be not because we believe in the person who won or the party that won, but because we wanted the military to go so that, you know, we can actually have a, you know, civilian, you know, um, uh, uh, democracy. That was why many Nigerians, many progressive Nigerians, they supported, you know, um, the agitation on June 12 as a way of getting military out because we were desperately trying to see how the military should just go because we were not sure whether they want to really, you know, continue to perpetuate themselves given by given the um, the IBB, you know, postponement of you know um, election. If you remember, uh, that was the last, you know, uh, uh, of the IBB, you know, uh, uh, transition in its transition plan. So people like Jega that he was talking about, Jega is an academician. He, doesn't, he has never come out to do protest to say, um, you know, I'm supporting uh, 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 Abiola. No. But in principle, 
many activists, they do that because they were tired of the military dictatorship. So there's a difference between participating in the you know, um, 1993 election of the MK Wabiola and you know, people wanting to see that, okay, there should be justice and that the military should go. Many of the people who have supported that from many mass democratic organizations, including women in Nigeria, uh, Campaign for Democracy, and quite a number of the organizations that we belong to at that time, they did that not because they were in support of Abiola or Bashir Topa. They did that just to get military out. It's part of the strategy. So even when he was making reference to Jega, that is not correct. At least I know Jega. Jega was uh, my classroom teacher. I so I know I, him and we were trained by many of them. I think that clarification was extremely important. We have to thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily. We do not know how this is going to go um, at the Senate now that the public hearing has been. The, uh, the screening has been done. I believe that the, the committee will do a report. But what do you think that will eventually come out of that particular committee? If the, the, National, in 30 seconds. If the National Assembly want, is, want to respect the expression, the, the yearning and expression of Nigerian people, if the National Assembly are truly representative of the Nigerian people, mm -hmm. Nigerian people have said that please and please let this woman, you know, go back to the president, let the president find a better things to appreciate her. But to be an a commissioner, it will undermine the credibility of the 2023 election. Mm. So this is the position that we have taken. Like I said, Fix Nigeria Politics is out there to see how they can help to clear or to clean the mess in the Nigerian politics. And they are helping with all sorts of um, technical support to ensure that the Electoral Act itself, that the National Assembly have done, do, have done their thing, which did not carry the aspiration and the demand. Well, the, and let's not done. jump to conclusions. They say, well, nothing has changed. At no, least the no, House no, has no, come no. to categorically say that nothing has changed. We have to thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Early this morning, Mr. Awa Rafsujani. And we also have to thank Mr. Emmanuel Ligbini Odafe, who is a national president of uh, Vanguard for Transparent Leadership and Democracy, who joined us via Zoom in Port Harcourt. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Early this morning.